Good morning, everyone. It is another stream. How about some clapping? I always like to start the stream with some clapping. No clapping? Oh, my sound on this side. I thought I was being smart and I muted it. So how's everyone doing today? Uh, today is going to be an interesting stream, I think, because this is the Mosaic Palette 2, uh, a multicolored unit, and it does four color, but it doesn't do it like an extruder at a time. It splices the filament on the fly. And this is the second version of the palette. There was an original palette, Palette Plus, uh, that was not as economical as these are and didn't look near as flashy. So I'm very interested to see how this thing works. So let's go through the chat. There is a bunch of people. Trolling for Jollers, John is here. Hello, Magnus is here. Robert Reynolds, welcome. The Guinness, uh, Martin 3DP Iceland. Uh, Die Mike, hello. Don, the 3D printing nerd is here. Uh, Failure 2, hello, how are you? Imagination to form. Welcome, Mike Wiley, welcome, John Mack, uh, Colin Hill is here, Jake from State Farm, hello, Palette 2 on a snappy, I don't think so, uh, uh, I don't know how to say that, but welcome from Greece, 3D Gustner is here, Matt Williamson is here, uh, Sergio, hello, how are you, who else, Jay's 3D Adventures is here, Mad Mike is here, 3D Print Viking is here, Darren is here, Steven the Lightspeed, Ozen is here, uh, DT Mash is here, Bo is here, Eggy is here, Trevor's here. We got a bunch of people in the chat, so hopefully this goes well today. So, my goal with this, so this isn't really a printer build, right? Uh, it's an add on build. Uh, my goal is to walk you through the, the experience, right? Because I don't know anything about it or how to set it up. I know that there is a program online cloud-based called Canvas that allows you to uh, that color the models on the fly so you can just like paint them and make them multicolor. Um, I don't know how easy it is to set up. I have no clue. So we're going to walk through all the screens and everything you need to do to get one of these set up on an existing printer. Uh, there... FPV for pleasure, welcome. And Steve, welcome. Uh, Paul is here, hello, welcome. I'm probably just gonna grab this machine back here, this MK2, because it's close at hand uh, to use, but let's just get into this. We're gonna use my official opening boxes knife that John sent, because it is awesome. And uh, let's just get into it and see what we got. Uh, I'm very curious about this thing, because I'm not exactly sure how it works. Some uh, people, people that I have talked to that have used these say that they are awesome and super easy. So we'll see. Good morning, Brian Vines. It might blow up. <laughs> uh, morning, Fat Pulse Projects, Ed. Thomas, Arduino's ma Arduino makes is here. Uh, Matt UK is here. Welcome. You'd like to see it integrated on MK3? Yeah. Uh, MK2, MK3, it really, you know, it's not going to matter a whole lot. This thing, uh, the tape's coming off. Uh, because, you know, integrating it wise, so uh, frame design or whatever, wouldn't matter a whole lot. That's a pretty nice box. You want to see the box? There you go. No, that's not the right one. You want this one. There you go. Nice box. Uh, integrating options should be about the same for those two printers. But yes, it might be a different, it may be a better option than the MMU2. You do lose one color, but you sat through the new MakerBot ad for me, Ricky. I appreciate that. Chad Williams is here. Hello. Probably missed a few of you. Mapro6 is here. TK's 3D Prints is here. So we have a book. Thank you for taking a look through your box. 
Ozen, thank you very much for the five the five bucks. Uh, you are welcome. I've been me I had been meaning to test that. So Ozen has the multi multi octoprint set up on a Raspberry Pi, and sometimes upgrading those breaks it. And I did go through and run through the one dot three dot ten version and make sure it worked. And it does work. So feel free to upgrade if you have one of those multi instances, because it should not break anything. This thing is a chunk. Um, that thing probably weighs 10 pounds. I might be exaggerating, but that is a sizable piece of equipment there. We got all kinds of boxes. We have a extremely oversized Bowden tube. What is all of this? I'm guessing most of this is mounting options. Cause yeah, those are definitely mounting pins. All the jokes lately about things blowing up. I have blown a few things up here and there, my friend. Uh, I had a Tronxy X5S try to kill me once. Uh, a piece of the acrylic shattered and tried to take out my eyes, but it missed. It failed to do its job. Uh, I have also let the smoke out of multiple, multiple electronics boards, some of them live on stream. I shelled, uh, what was that? A Duplicator 3 on a, a afternoon chat one day. I, uh, I have done a couple like that live, where, but I, I run through stuff like uh, a bull in a china closet. I mean, I just, psh, we'll just get another one, it's fine. Bernie Clark just subscribed, thank you, Bernie. John is here. Welcome. Justin L is here. Never let the machines win. Mike is here. Joe Paddock is here. Good morning. <laughs> Michael Bay film. <laughs> so most of this is our mounting options. One thing I want to get on camera to show you is how it splices. You know, we're going to print the same old stuff, right? Printing's printing. That I get it. No big deal. That's the printer side. I am more interested in how this thing grabs the filament, measures it out, and works it down that way. Uh, I, I'm very excited to see that work. So let's just start with the get started here. Bunch of people on this morning, excellent. YouTube just notified you, okay, cool. It, at least they notified you at all. Splices up to four filaments, safety, We'll just skip that part. So we have a stand. So this is our stand. Mounting bracket spool holder. Gotcha. Spool holder filament holding rods. All right. Okay, so I'm guessing one of these is the power adapter. They show you all the internals and such. Ryan, Mr. Butcherm is here. Hello, Ryan. We have some Velcro pieces. We have an SD card. Okay. A cable, a little screwdriver. It's a torque head. We got a sticker. Some Nylon tubes of some kind. Yeah, that Gusser, that's what I want to see. No purge block, just, you know, just straight to the model, no BS. Uh, we have all different kinds of plug adapters. In Joel's voice. It's fun. Speaking of Joel telling, and Thomas is on here. Uh, you get a sticker. <laughs> Thomas is on here. So Joel telling tweeted out last night. He had a real tight seat. I don't know if you if you follow Joel on the Twitters. He had a real tight seat on a plane and not much leg room. And I totally feel for him because that happens to me. You know, every time I fly. 
Uh, but Thomas came back and said, you know what? Uh, leg room on a plane, he, so, something to this effect. He said, you know, that's one of the th things that's really awesome about being 12. And I don't, I don't know why, it made me laugh a lot when I read that. <laughs> like, way to go, Thomas. Zing! <laughs> I love it. Martin makes a bigger purge block than the MMU2, eh? Yeah, no need to color the model, just beep, beep, beep. Yes, yes, pretty much. Sometimes you get lucky and there's some planes that, uh, that are a have a little bit more, but not, not very often. Pallet 2 can be used in several positions. It has rubber pads on the back, so you can, lay you can just use it like that, which is probably what we'll do today. Select the appropriate outgoing tube. Most printers use the medium tube. Bowden printers typically use the small tube. Insert the wide end. They want me to Velcro, Velcro this plastic piece onto the top of my extruder to hold this Bowden tube. I can tell you at the moment, the first time seeing that, that doesn't really sit all that well with me. I'm, I'm just, just giving you my honest opinion right as I read that. They, uh, starting your first print, and then they point you to canvas. Let's just open this thing up, shall we? You could use duct tape instead of Velcro, yeah. What's this world coming to? We have a screen we can take the plastic off. That's cool. So we got belts and gears and a sensor. Interesting. Hmm. A splice core. It doesn't really look like there's any setup though. So, I mean, it's all there other than taking the plastic off. Does the video seem stuttered? It seems stuttered to me for some reason. But as long as it's good for you guys. This computer has been nothing but trouble since I bought it. Select the appropriate outgoing tube. Most printers use the medium tube. Bowden printers typically use the small tube. Well, we're not gonna put it on a Bowden printer. So what are the differences here? This is all about finding things. There's not a whole lot of different in size, but we're going with this one. It goes here on the top, like so. That is a specialized tube. Okay. Looks fine here, okay, good. Tom, the 3D Printing Llama, welcome. Like I said, I want to show you this, not necessarily the printer. So I think the printer is going to, like, just sit over here. Let's, um... Oh, there's still a part on it. Even better. Oh, and it's still attached to filament. We don't want that. filament from the sky.
guess I should take that part off. PETG and PEI, they love each other very much. I tend to stick stuff down to the bed a little closer than most people should, but I want it to always work the first time. And build sheets are not really a worry of mine. This is the part for the snappy, by the way. I broke the uh, idler knob, the thing that holds the idler knob, and so I redesigned that part and reprinted it. I think it will work much better. Two thousand and nine laptop. Cool. I think it's just OBS being difficult. Dropping frames point two percent. Oh, that'll uh, that's good enough for me. I'm gonna heat this up and get that PETG out of there. Yeah, uh, P P E I and P E T G. You got to be careful because they they do really like each other. A little pixel effect, huh? Sergio, cool a live stream. That's awesome. Like white on rice. Robot Hut is here. Hello, welcome. In pattern mode, gotcha. Special slicing, gradient mode, and pattern mode. It'd be nice to take all the smaller sections of filament and make a roll of filament. Hey, Pierre, welcome. Uh, yes, I, uh, the palette loves it and so do I. Geese 86, you are welcome. I'm glad it's working for you. Nelby 2 welcome. The Papa Tech, welcome. Yeah, that would be awesome. Hack Attack, Merry Christmas. Uh, Waichi is here. Hello, how are you? All right, let's get this out of here. And I, I, something I do, which I'm going to throw this on the floor, ignore that. Something I do if I'm switching and I really want things to work out well, if you're switching different types of material, and today is one of those days, I want the Mosaic to Palette 2 to have the best chance of working first time, is I will reload, a, even if it's not the filament that I go to, I will reprime it with PLA, with the lowest temperature thing I have, PLA. So that if, it's fine if you're going to a higher temp filament, but not so good if you're going to a lower temp filament and you're trying to kick out all that excess. So for example, if we start printing PLA, which is lower temp, and we just had PETG in there, it's not gonna be able to purge it near as well at 215 as it would at 240. And of course, the only time I've ever had problems loading this extruder is right now.
Right, Ryan, and that, that's what I've run into that issue a couple of times because, you know, I'll have printers that sit there for a month or two. All in, hello, hello, welcome. Doing well, Aichi, doing well. George Peoples is here, hello. Yeah, it wouldn't be a live stream if everything ran smoothly. Because, yeah, you, I mean, some of these have a pretty good size transition area, and you can get it pretty full of whatever plastic you were using. I just, I don't know, it's just sometimes if I'm putting something away and I'm not going to use it for a while, I'll always transition back to PLA just to make sure everything goes right. So that's good. I think I just got a uncooperative tooth on my extruder gear. That's why I couldn't get that through there. No worries. Paul is here, welcome. Robbie Mack, what is up? Chiro just became a subscriber, welcome. Zero, zero. I like that better. Wingman, secret handshake. Rodney Lamore, hello. I saw something else. What is this smooth word? <laughs> Just order Raspberry Pi Octofan, Octofan, some relays, also because you're V6. Student from Inter3, upgrades, any advice? I should remember when assembling that stuff. Uh. V6 on an Ender 3, I'm sure there's tons of mounts for that. Nimble Extruder, I don't know much about. I've never had one. I really, I, all of that should be pretty smooth though. That should go pretty smoothly, I would think. I think you're in good shape there. Okay, what am I doing now? So I'm Velcroing this thing to the top of my printer, eh? Hmm, hmm. I don't really think, on a Prusa drive, there's not a whole lot of room to Velcro anything. I guess I could set it on top of the motor. I don't really care for that. I hate Velcroing anything to my precious printer. It says insert narrow part, like so. I will, I don't want to insert it first though. I want to see how that hole lines up. That's what you did? Yeah. Yeah. This is some crazy Velcro. All right, all right, all right. I don't see how Velcroing things could go wrong. <laughs> It'd be fine. No worries. Okay, it's Velcroed. Fine. Okay. Next, they want me to put together a spool holder. We need some filament for this thing. Hmm. So let's do... Now my power plug's awful short. I'm gonna have to find a longer power plug. In fact, Let's find a longer power plug and let that cool off a moment. That one's pretty short. 
There's a really long one back here somewhere. Eh, I don't know. This one might be all right. Fixie 3D, welcome. No, PETG is uh, 616 Drones, welcome. It's a Pallet 2, Pallet 2, right? Just the Pallet 2. It's not the Pro, it's the regular. Cra crazy sticky Velcro, eh? I wanted to put it like this, maybe, so we could kind of see what's going on. And then if I had the power plug is long enough to not get in our way, then we should be in good shape. PETG, you would never need an enclosure for. You probably could even print it without a part fan, just fine. No warping. It really likes to stick to PEI. Um, the, no issues. Printed at about 230, 240. Good to go. Watch your retraction and your stringing, and you're all set. Yeah, the me the pro uh, the it'll it has some metal parts. You get a bunch of extra parts with it, and uh, uh, because it has the metal parts, they say you can print a little faster. But I really wasn't worried about all that. It, it's all it, at the beginning at the startup price. This cord isn't long enough. At the startup price, it was only a hundred bucks difference. I don't know what they're going to what the final price is going to be. There's just no good way here. Careful, careful. Don't fall off. Uh, hello? There it is. And now we're going to find some place for filament. So, we, they want us to fill, assemble this filament holder. Let's go ahead and put it together. Why not? That's what we're here for. We have to find three spools of filament. I got some Prusa orange there that looks pretty snazzy. The palette too, at the beginning was $500. I do not know what their final price is going to be. If you pre-ordered it was 500 bucks. Yes, yes. Uh, Prusa, Prusa is a champ when it comes to PETG. In fact, this one pretty much only prints PETG. Uh, its whole life has been PETG parts. The other one is in an enclosure, so it does some of the other work. Got a screw backed out. Okay. We're gonna find out, I don't know. I don't know anything about it yet. Might have to update the firmware, okay. <laughs> I should do a Prusa Zombie. I'll only be able to do four color Prusa Zombie. Let's find some filaments here. Let's go with this one for sure. Because I love Prusa Orange. I really do. What else? There's some crazy pink there. Meh. I don't know. How about some red? Eggy, it, it all depends on how big you need to print. If you're not worried about build size, 
Prusa MK3 all day, every day, hands down, no question. No question. What else? Got a red. I have some stuff sitting over there that's probably open. I have a bunch of stuff in boxes down here. There's clear, we don't want natural. I got yellow. Any other thoughts? Prusa should make a bigger model. I won't be mixing different materials today. Let's see what other colors we can find over here. Um, we already got orange. Let's see. I got some silver. Silver looks pretty good. I got black, I got white. How about some white and some silver? We're gonna use multiple manufacturers here. I'm gonna use four different manufacturers of filament. Let's get this one. There we go. That'll be the true test if we use multiple manufacturers. Okay, we're gonna go orange, red, white, and silver. So we have Prusa orange, we have Inland red, we have IC3D white, and we have Filamentum silver. The printer's finally cool. Okay. Nice and cheap and it works. Excellent. Didn't miss anything yet. I'm still fiddling around with stuff. Yeah, we're going to we're going to find out with uh, the with the white if there's any bleed issues or anything like that. Example printer setups, they give you nice pictures. Thank you. Thank you for the pictures. Accessing the filament. If you encounter filament or or jams, you can take it apart. They show you how to do all that. Replacing the splice tube. That's what that little nylon piece is. So now we go to canvas. Okay. So do we want to just do full on screen share? Because I think most of this is going to be setting up canvas. Because that's the only way I'm going to be able to show you what I have to go through to get this done. But it's not going to be near as interesting as, you know, me standing around drinking coffee. This could be the coolest Minchie ever. Okay, then we're going to screen share. Let's, let's just do this. All right, so we've got live dashboard and all that. We can get us another one. So we need to go to canvas.io. I do have a Canvas account, but that's as far as I got. And I can't type. Canvas.io. Nope, canvas3d.io. OK. The world's first multi-material splicer. Don't anybody steal my Canvas account. Okay, here's what we get. Sure, why not? There's a Canvas Hub plugin for Octoprint. We'll see. So we have the palette too. I do not have a canvas hub, but I do have a Raspberry Pi over there with Octoprint on it that, that's for this printer. So we, if we need to do that, that's fine. Turn on your palette and connect it to your computer. Okay, where is my USB cable? 
We'll use the one that they gave us. It's nice and long. It is on and connected to my computer. Follow getting started guide into it. Yep, we did that. Create a new project. Thank you so much for the tip, Salvador. I don't know what that currency is, but it is very much appreciated. That sounds like somebody, what, what is it? Somebody has an, somebody's code, some idiot has on their luggage. Anyway, a new project, add new. Choose from printer presets, create a profile, import from a different slicer. Hmm. Choose from printer presets. Let's see what this is. Ooh, Prusa. Uh, I do have an MK2. Okay. Standard infill. That's fine. I'm all right with that. Let's see what it. Let's see what's in here. Okay. So you get a, you get somewhat the options here. Okay. Good with that. Now what? Okay. So we have our printer. Yep, yep, yep. So, add a new style profile, import from a different stylizer, start with a blank profile, copy from an existing profile. Hmm. Well, I guess we're gonna start with a blank profile. Profile name, Chris. Oh no, this is the printer profile. Okay, you click on the profile, my bad. Drop in multi-material models here, drop multi-material models here. Single material models. will not group or align models. So if I drop in a single material model, will it let me paint it? I'm waiting. It's catching up. Waiting. Okay, here we go. So all of my STL files on a NAS share, and every time you wake it up, it uh, takes a moment. Okay, so this is a single Benchy. Let's see, just see what it does. Okay. So, yep, we're placed. Click the color step at the top. So, we want to change these colors, yeah? So, so we've got one to four. One is going to be orange. Two is red. We guessed good on that one. Default PLA is fine. Nope, nope. Orange. Yep. Red. Yep. White. Yep. And some silver. Okay. Drop colors onto your model. But that's only like one color, right? I mean, so you're still going to have to have a multi, a chopped up multi model, right? For this to work. Okay, so see, you still have to have a, it's not like you can just paint any model. Uh, I don't have the, 
I bet you I don't even have that downloaded. We're going to have to have that. Hold on. One moment. 3dbenchy.com. You can watch me do this, I guess. Uh, download 3D files. No, that's just the single. Um, oh, that's ordering. There we go. You can add the colors wherever you like. It just has to be a multicolored model. Okay. Waiting for Thingiverse. I spend whole, my whole life waiting for Thingiverse. Um, probably get it on Instructables faster. But they probably link to Thingiverse. Come on, Thingiverse. I don't know if I have to sign into you imagine or not to use it. What is wrong with the internet today? Well, if Thingiverse would ever load, I'd get it from Thingiverse. Finally. You know, I have patience for lots of things. But being around computers so much my whole life, I have no patience for them. That's not what I wanted. You know, one thing that's interesting, I don't have Mesh Mixer either. Uh, the default hull for The Benchy is actually broken. All right, word canvas go. There we go. This is going to take a second. You have zero patience, you're not a doctor. Hello, Ron Floyd, how are you? We're waiting for Canvas to upload things. The pun game is strong today. You have little patience. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Emily, I whispered to my <laughs> be strong. I whispered to my wife. I said, love it. Ben, Hawk 3D Pro is here. Welcome. All right. So. Yep. 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 Okay. Okay. I see what you're doing here. Color. And I can drag that onto my hull. Well, the whole thing's. Okay. Oh. Aha. So let's do this. Nope, nope, that's not what we want. We want that. This is going to be an awesome looking benchy, I can already tell. Can you zoom in? Because there we go. There, I like that. I like that. Uh, we're going to keep that orange, that orange. That's looking pretty good already, I think. Uh, let's make these white. Looking pretty good. Um, smokestack is definitely going to have to be red on top and silver. Hmm. I don't know. I kind of like this. It's looking pretty sweet. I think we should go with this. I like it. All right. Now what do we do? So we did that. Click on preview. Step at the top of the screen. 
How about what's settings? Yeah, no, that's fine. Uh, preview. We're slicing. Can I have a candy? Sure. It's going to be a long print. Silver wheel. Well, I left it orange. We'll see. So we're slicing. We're slicing. This might take a minute. This might be a good time to get coffee while we're slicing. Oh, wait. It's moving. Okay. We have sliced. It's 100%. Okay, loading print preview. Download the save files for your printer. Whoa. Hopefully that preview is a lot more awful than the print is going to be. That is the biggest purge block I've ever seen in my life. Uh, download. Here's what's next. Printing your models. Uh, I purchased this. As with almost everything, I purchased this. You can adjust the transition tower size to, you just have to go back and do that. Well, oh, wait, now I'm no, I messed up my tutorial. Um, okay. So... Is my tower in here? Transition tower. Aha! So, what do you think? It's 110. I'd really like it to be like 60. No? What is, what is side transition and no handling? Minimum bottom density. Click place. Get a free boathouse, nice. Free harbor. <laughs> Side transition is for purge bucket. Oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. If you click place, you can adjust the size, not in settings. Thank you. Place, size, transition tower. The gray circles. Yeah, 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 I gotcha. I would guess it would let me edit that right there. My tutorial button's in my way. Auto arrange. Scale, rotate, move. No. Adjust.
Why can't I move this tutorial thing? Scale. All right, I'm on scale. Oh, so. Right, that's what we're finding out. Aha! Well, that wasn't near as intuitive as I was hoping. That's okay. But it won't let me scale. It's still huge. I don't know, man. You're just changing the shape of it, though. You're not making it any smaller. I don't care for that. I really don't. I don't like that at all. Okay, well, I guess we have to deal with this purge block. I wonder what no handling is. It'll let me do 90, 80, break that thing, 70, 80, 20, 80, 20, 10, 80, 20. Let's go with that. It's gonna be big. Okay, well, we're slicing again. That's kind of ridiculous and a little heartbreaking. That's okay. That's why we do these things. We're learning. Okay, Jesus, that is huge. Um, wow. All right. Okay, printing models. Now, place a download MAF file onto the included SD card and insert it into your palette. Where's my SD card? Okay. And then we'll put that in the palette. Where, I'm not sure. There it is. Okay, that is in the palette. Next, place the, okay, we did that. First, select start print, then tap the SDR next to your file to begin your print.
video tutorial. Print complete. Okay, now I need an SD card for this printer. Oh, it has one. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So there's really nothing more to see over there. So let's try this. What's going on in chat? Takes about nine hours for a four color Benchy. Awesome. Uh, connected mode is better. Yeah, I believe you can edit, you can integrate all this into an Octoprint environment that makes it easier. Go to Tools, Generate Custom MSF. Okay. We've introduced some things to for your palette while it was on your way to you. So we have to do a firmware upgrade right off the bat. So you want to go back to screen? What, mm3d.co? Firmware update. It looks cool, that's for sure. No worries, Newer. We're just going through this like anybody else would. That's that's the point. We'll get it figured out. Uh, if it starts printing at all, um, I'll be amazed. Besides, we can get this print started, and then uh, hopefully we can finish it up for today's FKB stream that I will... Fun in the Country Basement will be hosted by me today, so we can check in on it this afternoon. All right, we're setting up. No matter what, don't turn it off during an update. That's a good tip. Next. Install latest. Don't unplug. Beep, 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 beep. Right on. Well, we'll uh, hopefully we'll have a four-colored Benchy 
on that stream, or at least the ending of one. Some dude bricked his grade. I don't know if I can get you any better oh, well, while that's doing its thing. See if I can get the camera over here so you can kind of watch what I do when we push buttons and such. Which camera is that? That's that one. Whoops. What if the power goes out? Oh. Roderick, don't say that. Don't say that, buddy. Uh, Nuru, it's an MK2. Mark II. It's a Prusa Mark II. People like me to say Mark II, not MK. MK. Awesome. I'm glad you like the shirt. Roderick won a shirt on one of the giveaways. Was it the 5,000 sub giveaway? Terry, that's probably a great idea. Nice. Is it like, is it creepy that you can't see me? I'm kind of just narrating the screen as it happens. That seems kind of weird. Call it a Mark II, okay? That's right. I should start saying that. That would really irritate him. Don't break, don't break, don't break. That's that's my that's the next t-shirt I need. Yeah, Ricky, we've been doing really well lately. Uh it, even the you know the YouTube did a bunch of purging. I don't I think I only lost maybe a handful, 10 at the most. Uh, that which is awesome because that means people are actually subscribed, not just robots. Graphics? Who needs graphics? Lost seven? Eh, it's not too bad. The don't break shirt, yes. <laughs> Let's start selling those. Imagination deforms the robot. Well, you're you're an interactive robot, so we like you. Lost sixty. Prince of Purge. Uh. <laughs> Brian, that's the best one I've heard in a while. All right, you get uh, you get uh, drums for that. Awesome. See you later, Ozen. YouTube is frustrating at best, Ben. Okay, success. Success. So let's um, close this and then we'll go back to this. There's huge glare and I apologize, but maybe as my as we kind of go through this, it will be better. Next, uh, which guide tube are you using? I am using the medium one, right? Yes, medium. Onboarding complete, finished, okay. Start print. Loading files. Uh, hello.
SD card. Okay. Initializing palette. Oh, it's moving. It's doing stuff. New printer. This is the first time you've used a printer with a palette to the process to start to print. Will be a little different this time and will calibrate your printer. Okay. Uh, clear output. Remove tube and pull out filament. We okay. Okay. Insert orange filament in input one. It does know the color. That's cool. And we're going to want to clip the ends on these because who knows what we where these have been. Where is the... Oh, it's up on top. Gotcha. That is a tight bend. All right. Orange is coming at you, palette too. Okay, load red filament. All right, all right, all right. Load white filament. This one's probably okay, but let's go ahead and put an angle on it. I have not looked at, I haven't been that far yet, Gusner. Uh, I will though. Load gray filament. Cause I think that's gonna be the way to run this permanently. Ugh. That sounds awful. Heat your printer's extruder. What if I don't want it? It's heating. I have no coffee. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty sweet. It's feeding it up the tube. Really? Nice. Is Nuru, have you tried the SD version? Is it a problem that the printer goes out of sync? Because that was my biggest question. That's, that's the part that I find that they can do this at all. Uh, so we're at like 180. It tore the sticky stuff right off of the Velcro like I figured it would. Feed filament into your printer's extruder gear. I have to say I'm not really loving this part yet. Is up with this thing today it's like fighting me it's giving me more filament as I pull it what the what the listening helps Chris, why you gotta be so hard on me? I have to listen to things?
obviously you don't come to these streams very often. <laughs> Pizza, awesome. All right. Okay. Slowly jog filament into your extruder. I'm guessing they want me to do this by hand or what would they like me to do? Mud nut, hello, how are you? <laughs> All right. Okay. Start print on your printer. It's really interesting. Feed it cookies. Canvas? You mean the hub? No, I did not get a hub. Hub is pretty much just a Pi Zero. So I figured it wasn't all that useful. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. This is going to be amazing if this works at all. Fifth 3D printer, awesome. Five people hit the wrong thumb. That's okay. Hello, Derek Matthews. How are you? I don't know why, but... The printer wasn't at 215? Okay. I think it'd be pretty easy to swap between printers.
bacon fat, I'll support anybody. Chris, that is a great idea, and I did that on the MMU too, because I find that the in most interesting part. I think that would be awesome to see it do all of its stuff in time-lapse. Definitely we're going to do that. Man, that thing is smashed. There you go. All right. We're going. Stefan is here. Welcome, Stefan. Hit finished. That's re There's really not... I mean, I guess I... Because we're going to be doing orange for a while, right? I mean, there's really not a whole lot to look at here. Oh, now we're doing a purge block. I don't know what the default settings are from palette for this machine, but this is really slow for this machine. Bacon fat is super cool. Well, Ricky, if he's a friend of yours, he's a friend of mine. Uh, yeah, I'll uh, I'll help anybody that needs it. You want to link a video, Nuru? Go for it. Oh, you were telling me that he was super cool. Or I was super cool. You were telling him that I was super cool. Uh, I probably missed a whole bunch. The inside is impressive, I have to say. It puts kind of a tight curl on that filament. Uh, if it wasn't the right consistency of PLA, you'd probably snap it. I don't know what the max feed rate is. That's a great question. Please work, please work. That's what I'm saying. Purge blocks are epic. Okay, so it's catching my orange up. It's loading more. I wish I could show you both. Well, it's got really wide infill, so maybe that's a good sign. I'm unsuper cool, and that's not true. <laughs> there you go. Please work, please work. <laughs> that's a great idea. Yeah, it, it don't, there's not much infill to that thing. That's a good thing, though. That's what we want. On my X cables. <laughs> um, so, this machine was set up only for the purposes to test the Mosquito hot end. So, I built this machine and put a Mosquito in it. But when I built it, I had the stock V6. So, all of the stuff hanging is the original stock stuff for the V6, uh, and I fully intend to pull the Mosquito out of here and use it on another project and put the V6 back in, so I just zipped it and left it hanging. So it's my awesome wire management skills uh, 
again. That's what you see hanging, but there you go. Is Red Light here? I missed him. If it is, if you are here, Red Light Mike, welcome. Michael, yes, mechanical watch. Uh, kinda, yeah. There's lots of different springs and gears and stuff inside it. It's pretty cool in there. What better place to store it? That's right. Mosquito bite and hot end? No. One, yes. Other, no. Uh, the mosquito hot end is awesome. It really is. It's, it's overkill for what I do. Uh, but I do plan on... I have some high temp stuff, and it, it's going to uh, fill in for that job sooner than later. A good dual extruder printer? I really can't. I don't have a good dual extruder printer. Um, some of these folks in here, I'm sure, can can recommend one for you. I don't have one that I currently like. So, no, I really can't recommend a good dual extruder. Yeah, uh, f fixing one of these could be a real trick. There's a lot of people, TK, the, the flu has been been killing them. I know Mike was saying he's been struggling. I just cross my fingers, I hope I don't get it. After the first layer, it should pick up like 20 or 30, but we'll we'll see how see what the pilot does for us here. <laughs> yeah, you have to go back a little ways to uh, to to get that joke, but yeah, no, I would never recommend that on anyone. The G Tech three color, it is still sitting over there in a pile of rubble. I have the carbon fiber rods and everything to fix it. I'm just still so disgusted about the whole thing that I haven't done it yet. So eventually I will. Oh, we're stopped. Oh, we're going again. That was interesting. Okay. We're stopped again. What's it thinking about? Robbie Mac, I kind of thought the same thing. Since it spliced it, you wouldn't have so much, but maybe they're working on that. I don't know. Ping pong data? Very well could be. Trying to sync up between that SD, both those SD cards. There you go, yeah, A10M. I've heard good things about that one. And I think it's pretty affordable. Software catching up. All right, then. It's because it has to... Oh, welcome to the stream, by the way. Checks one. Uh, it's because it has to build it up high enough so that when it does want to purge, it has something to purge on top of. Why did I take the blue pill? It'll pause many times, okay.
Right. Uh, in Olson, that's how I thought it worked. And that's why I was mad. We, we've talked about this thing before on many streams. And I was imagining this magical thing that measured it and figured out, you know, what time, when's the color change coming and all that. That is not how it, how it works. It does splice it, but it's still purging and waiting to get to that line in the G, in the G code. When it hits that G code, I haven't seen it do it yet, mind you. Here's my understanding as I know it. When it hits the G code that says, hey, it's time to change filament, uh, it's going, it, it thinks it knows the length of this tube and it is going to splice it in right before this length of this tube. And if that works, okay. Yeah, the, so Stephen, the only, this is it right here. This is, the, this is the only room on this extruder that I could possibly have to Velcro that. And it's sitting right on top of the motor, right there. That's the only way I could get it on that one. Now, the, the Mark III has a lot more area up there. So maybe there'd be more room for this, not sure. When it, when it transitions colors, does it print the purge block solid? Probably so. It probably prints a, a whole top layer. I don't know yet. Not smart enough yet, like so many of these are. Yeah, I'm sure the that adhesive is going to hold like a champ forever, right? Uh, that's a good question on the tube. Uh, if you got it set up just right, yes. Yes, you would want to do that. Ben, five dollars, or five... Euro tip. Thank you very much, Ben. I appreciate it. Uh, festiveness, early festiveness. The festivus, festivus for the rest of us. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. Yeah, Rodney, I'm sure they're, they're, they're starting to show up all over the place now. These have been coming out. These have been shipping for two or three weeks now. So we'll probably see all kinds of cool stuff coming out for all the different machines. I use the Mark III all the time. The Mark III is always busy. I love it. It never lets you down. Of course, always multicolored Vinci's. I have three or four already. You bet. All right, Tom, we'll see you later. <laughs> Never going to let you down. All right, I think t now is a perfect time to go get some more coffee. I'll be right back.
I'm back. Yeah, that Travlad Delta is looking awesome, Ben. I saw your prints. I don't have a CR-10S, Sergio. I have a regular CR-10. You haven't seen a fantastic MMU Benchy? It does struggle with the door frame. If you make all of the frames the same filament, it does a lot better. So the, the, the windshield frame, the round frame, and the two sides, it does a lot better. Do I have... You must do three keychains to calibrate. Well, it didn't say anything about that. Imagination to form, thanks for joining the stream. Uh, fairly straightforward, Tony Ryan, I guess. Coffee came out of a machine. It was already ready for me. Oh! It's getting ready to switch to red, and I don't think it's near time yet. I wish the glare wasn't so bad for you all. So the red's like getting ready to go into the splice core. I beat any calibration. <laughs> Yeah, no judging benchies anyway. So how does the calibration keychain work? Right, yeah, that's the waste block. Interesting. It's limited to, to like the, the length of the splice core. I didn't really think about that. So it spliced in a really small section of red, and now it's going to go back to orange. Techie Dad, you're, we're, a lot of us are in that same boat. Yes, currently it still has to purge out. No matter what I do, you're going to have glare on some part of that. Uh, who's on the basement? Uh, that I'm glad you brought that up. If everything goes as planned, it'll be me, Walter, Glenn, and our special guest for today will be Chuck Hellebuck. So that should be a good stream.
Now it's switching to red again. Uh, so Nuru, how does the calibration work in between the printer? Does the keychain spit out? So you have to go back through the slicing process, slice that keychain, and then do the same thing, printer and pallet, both SD cards? Because I noticed there was something on this SD card for the keychain, but do I have to run back through the whole process and spit them both out? I guess you do, right? Joel, a circular polarizer? You, you're, uh, you know a lot more than I do because I'm not even sure what all that stuff is. That is true. There's a lot of maintenance. It's switching like now it's going to go to white. Did we ever print any red? No, not yet. Okay. Does it work for webcams? You're on Walter's interview on Wednesday? Excellent. Gotcha. Yeah, it's got all kinds of splices going. It's got we got red, white, orange, all kinds of good stuff. Awesome, Ben. You're welcome. Glad to do it. A mount could be printed. Oh, cool. Yeah, so the splice core. It's a really interesting little deal in there. It looks just like a barrel to me. And there's a little heating unit here on the side. And it heats every time it needs to splice, it, you can see it rapid heat and kind of jam it together. That'd be cool to take one of those apart. Really, honestly, I don't really care about this print. Uh, it's going to look cool no matter what. It's going to be a good benchy because it's on this machine, no matter what color it is. But I'm, I'm more interested in watching this thing work. Because it is really cool in there.
Now it's pulling some silver through. I still haven't seen any red come through. Yes, all of this stuff was purchased by me. We, we have Prusa Orange, uh, Inland Red, Icy 3D White, and Filamentum Silver. I don't know if we'll do side-by-side -side MMU or not. They're kind of a really different animal. Maybe, maybe. So what's the first thing that we can expect? Let me go back to my canvas thing here. What's the first thing we can expect? So the decking, the decking's red. That's the first thing that would require a color change. And it's, uh, it's laid down the first layer of the deck. Coffee's awesome. Thanks for asking, Trevor. No, they mention nothing about calibration. They might ought to uh, put something in there about that. It's it's really cool how it works. Down and install firmware over firmware. Yep, 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 yep. It's doing stuff. Multi material. How's the purge looking? Not bad. I think we're just gonna have an orange benchy here. Uh, 
sorry. I um, missed a whole bunch of chat looking at stuff. And now I can't find where the mouse went. There it is. On the MMU2, forever. I don't even remember. It's really long. Nine or ten hours, I would guess. I'm not sure. How's the Pulse doing? The Pulse has been very unfortunate. Uh, the Pulse actually got shipped back to Matter Hackers, and they have it right now. Long, long story. Nappin is here. Hello. It does not waste cut. It just splices. Well, if it does, it drops it down into the bottom somewhere. I have no idea. Sweet. Ender 3 setup today. Oh, custom MMU2, huh? Nice. You can see it if you'd like, but I thought that I thought the palette doing its thing was much more interesting. Okay, so it is putting down some red on the deck. Awesome. I don't know if you can see that or not. Maybe when it gets out of the way, you can tell. Make a spool. <laughs> no, I've never seen those videos. Nuru, you you know how this goes for me. I open it and we just start working on it. <laughs> I have no, no research. Yeah, more cameras. That's what I need, right? So it did the it did the deck in red, but it also did the bow in red. A clear tube would be a lot cooler, you are correct. That's a great idea. Uh, I think you can. I think with one of these, you can just put in a bunch of a bunch of different spools and let it fuse it and make make filament. I believe there is a setup that on the old one, I know you could. Pat on the original palette, you could do that. I don't know why you couldn't on this one. It's pretty cool, and you know the the benchies that are interesting, like these, are the ones I like. You know, well, this is the first one from the palette too. Those are the ones that go on the wall and I keep. So it, it did some red, but it, then it overdid the red. Now it's purging back to red.
I have a bunch of stuff I should be working on while, while this thing prints, but you know how that goes. It's abstract art, exactly. It's gonna be a neat looking Vinci, I can tell you that. It kind of threw up some red filament like right on the corner of the model. I'm not sure exactly how that happened. That's interesting. Oh no, it was like, that's how it completed the, that's just how the infill was. And that's the, that's the filament it had at the time. Gotcha. It's going to be almost like a spotted Vinci. Tie dye Vinci. Yeah, there you go. Sure, Nappin, what do you got? I will help as I can. Oh, now we're doing some white. This is gonna be the coolest looking Bidgey ever. But really, the palette is doing its job. It's splicing beautifully, everything's working. That's awesome. The ball bearing for the MMU2 filament sensor. Oh, in metric. Uh... What's the easiest way for me to tell you that? I want to say those are five millimeter ball bearings. I'll look just for you, Nappin. Just for you, I'll go look. You watch this. Your, your cut voice will come with me just for you. I just so happened to have finished a print on this and it's not running at the moment. I believe they're five millimeter ball bearings and don't lose it because you're only getting one. And the easiest way to take them out is with a magnet, by the way. if you don't drop the magnet. Come on, ball bearing. Well, it doesn't want to grab. Where are my calipers? Need something. Like so. One moment. I'll be back, I promise.
does not want to grip today. Well, I can't get it out. There's an easy way to do this. Hold on. There we go. This ball bearing right here. That's seven millimeter all day napping. Romeo, hello, how are you? As of right now, I don't think you're going to ever get away from the purge block. Yeah, well, I mean, outside of the keychain calibration the Nuru's talking about, uh, it's working. So, I mean, it, the machine is doing its job. Now, is it the correct color? No, but that'll come later. Yeah, so the calibration is not correct, Magnus. It's just kind of dumping filament at the moment wherever it wants to. But uh, because the length, it didn't... So we're supposed to print keychains and set set how they look to calibrate the length of the tube and all that good stuff uh and we didn't do that because it doesn't say anything about that unless you watch these videos apparently but it's still going to kick out a really cool looking benchy and that's all right with me you bet Probably so. That's what we really need. We need to figure out how to reclaim all this filament. We need a we need an extruder in a filament maker kit. I think we're getting ready to hit a record of people watching. People really want to see the palette print. I don't think we've ever been to 200 before, but we're getting kind of close. Yeah, it did not, um, did not instruct me to do any of that. Yeah, it, well, and like, like, see, this is a, this isn't a very good five color benchy. It has a big skip in it, but that's a five color benchy, um, and we're focused on that benchy, so it's a little blurry. But I have a purge benchy somewhere that is exactly that. And I think it probably got knocked onto the floor, as with everything. There was a purge benchy. It's over there. I'll go get it for you. It's kind of, it, so the purge benchy is exactly what you're talking about. It's a bleed benchy. Don't hurt anything. Careful. Don't break, don't break. Oh, 
Oh man, I knocked all kinds of stuff on the floor. There we go. So that, that is a purge benchy. That's just all the bleeding from the MMU2. They're kind of interesting. This is headless, which needs to go in the garbage. Vertigo is here. Hello. Yes, I know in uh, Slick 3R you can print, you can do that on the fly, and that's what this is. So Clint the Chameleon looks like this, and his purge object was Crazy Benchy. Yeah, and I think you could probably set that up to have it pr purge into something that was somewhat useful. We could probably set that up. The duty paid, welcome. Uh, the Prusa, there is not a location where it can pr that it can purge off the bed, no. It can't get that far over. It might be able to, I don't really recall, it might be able to get far enough over here, but I don't think so. I think it's still right on the corner. To be a part for a 3D printer, oh, wouldn't that be cool? If, we, if you had a whole printer made out of purge objects, that would be killer. That's my kind of printer right there. Hi, Martin, how are you? <laughs> Reese Wilder for the waste box. <laughs> when I saw that pop up on the list, I was like, no way. And yes, it, no way. They had me for about two seconds. It, it wasn't as good, though, as the Prusa cooking machine. That, that one, I think that one was a lot funnier than the, than the Reese Wilder. Purge Snappy, there you go. Palette hasn't hasn't implemented that yet, okay. Yeah, like a Snappy. I need to work on the Snappy. Sure, we can do that, we can weigh it. I would think that purge to infill would be more accurate, yes. Depending on the object, of course. Oh, nice! Now it's printing super, super slow. I'm guessing it's thinking about something. Sometimes that's not such a good sign. Side purging on the CR10. Nice. Yes, the 3D 
3D printing tool, the colors are much different than what we sliced. Uh, needs some calibration, but still a cool looking Vinci so far. 8 bit boards, yeah. <laughs> uh, Yeah, it's not actually doing anything. I think it's just having a hard time uh, processing all of this stuff that's going on. Unless there's something in the slicer that that said like small perimeters slow down on small per perimeters or something like that, I don't know. Each color counts as a layer. That would make sense. It was my fault. Welcome to the stream. It's ping-ponging. Gotcha. Oh, Nura, I'm going to do it. Don't, don't you worry. Don't you worry. It might even be done by the end of the day. Yeah, I know, Tony. I see Benchies constantly. Anders, hello from Sweden. Thank you for joining the stream. I've got a Benchie burned into my retina. Uh, Real Cad, don't know that one. Um, what was I thinking about, Nuru? Nuru, um... So what is involved in setting all that up on, on Octoprint? Is it just a plug-in? So you have your, you have Octoprint, you got your palette plugged in, and your printer plugged in, and there's a plug-in that coordinates that? Is that all I have to do? You're not alone. Nice. Cause that pie is already set up and running. If I only if all I have to do is put a plug in, in then uh, we're good to go. Two plug in, super easy. You need to make a canvas account. I have a can okay. They are not in the Octoprint repro. Repo. Uh, getting started. Operations, maintenance, resources. Multi spool mode, multi color print, color calibration.
No, I do not. It, so, I'm glad you bring that up. Uh, Deso Man, thank you for joining the stream. No, I don't do research. That's the whole point of this. So you open the box, you know nothing about it, right? You open the box, and this is what you get. And some companies are better than others about doing this kind of thing. And that's what I want to show you. I, I purposely don't get any information on this stuff just so that we can see what happens. I don't know, uh, different materials. I'm guessing you can. I don't, I don't know how well like PETG and PLA and stuff would splice together. I'm not sure. Latest version of Octoprint. From URL, install. Good morning, Richard Scale Studios. <laughs> uh, PETG, P TPU, oh man, I'd really throw it for a loop. I did see that case, that is really cool. I have done PETG and PLA on the MMU, uh, and, and it works pretty well. You do have to account for um, you do have to account for how well that PETG sticks to the bed. I found because then you put PLA on top of it, uh, things get a little. Eh. Yeah, it should calibrate the temperatures. I just don't know how well that they would splice together, being separate materials. I, I don't know. They might work just fine. I'm not sure. We're going to try it, though. I can tell you that. Plugins are installing. Windmill powered Prusa. Uh, this one is uh, a lightning powered Prusa. I've got um, I've got my I have a windmill somewhere, actually. Yeah. Here you go. There you go. <laughs> awesome, Thomas. Awesome. Yes, dissolvable support is where it's at. I definitely want to get some of that and try it. I don't have any yet. I've never used it. It's right there. Uh, it's uh, it, it doesn't go very far. I use it all the time for tutorials. It is right there. It currently has uh, uh, TMC 2130s installed on it, so it's it's in really good shape right at the moment.
Octoprint is restarting. Right on, Napier. Thank you for joining the stream. Uh, I will do. We'll do. We'll, we'll get this one figured out, I'm sure. Now, I have to say, I don't plan on watching this whole print. print. I think we'll go for another 30 minutes or so. Oh, I have a few things I would like to catch up on before Fun in the Country Basement. Uh, Fun in the Country Basement is at 4 o'clock Eastern, 3 o'clock my time. We'll run for two hours. Hopefully, everybody will be there, including Chuck Hellebuck this week. That's going to be awesome. But by the time that stream rolls around, hopefully this print will be finishing up. And you can see it there. If you don't see it there... Uh, I will, the thumbnail for this video will include this Benchy if you want to get a look at it. Yeah, tune with two colors is probably a great idea. So 1 a.m., sorry napping. <laughs> Octoprint's thinking about it. It might do it. <laughs> Sleep is good. I should get some more of it. Oh! Oh! It like re totally rearranges your Octoprint. It turns it into Canvas Hub. Nice. Check this out. You know what regular Octoprint looks like, I'm sure. This is what, after you install all those plugins, you get Canvas Hub. Fancy. My account has been linked. New project. MK Mark Two, not MK. Heck, Monkey Scott is here. Hello, Scott. How are you? Retraction on this machine uh, is 0 0.8 millimeters at 35 millimeters a second. The, the next stream is on this channel. So look for it. Uh, it's actually already scheduled out there on my channel. So look for it here. 
Uh, it's much faster than the MMU2, Scott, I can tell you that. What's sleep? Can you eat it? Exactly. Yeah, a little pricey. But for what it does, crazy. Crazy. No, we don't want to do that. No, I haven't. Let's look at it. I did change lightning to windmill. Somebody asked me if it was wind powered. So I changed to windmill. <laughs> yeah, uh, I saw those the other day. Somebody was mentioning that, that you could put the hook in the top of the benchy. I need to print some of those out because I, I have more than enough to hang on the tree. Very cool, though. Maybe I'll do that later today. I'm going eco-friendly, yes. <laughs> Three, Brian, 3D Print Creator, how are you? Thanks for joining today. Yes, this should work with any printer. Okay, that's not a bad idea. Slice version and the, I can do that. Yeah, so much for sparse infill. Slicing. When I have a second check Twitter, okay. Yeah, it's very, very little retraction. Electricity powering the windmill. It's backwards. <laughs> Interesting.
Inside the mind of Matt, Matt Snow is here. Hello, Matt. How are you? No way, a Benchy. Two hundred and eighty one splices. <laughs> Call the fan. Lithos are cool. When will I bet? Off-colored Benchy. Awesome, Benchy. I did get the ornament. Thank you, Matt. I still need to uh, pull it in and print it out. Merry Christmas to you. Oh yeah. Yeah, I, now I know what you're talking about. Yes, uh, I'm gonna have to figure out a way how to beat that. I'm not sure how, but I'll try. It's doing some interesting thinking, Brian, while it's doing different parts of the model. Uh, it'll slow way down while it's uh, figuring things out, it seems like. You should lay on the uh, it's, it, They're all over the place because there was no calibration done. But that's okay, we're still gonna have a cool benchy. Tom, the 3D Printing Llama, has uh, modeled my face. <laughs> Check this out. <laughs> That's kind of creepy. Kind of creepy. <laughs> oh, Tom. Tom, you're too much, man. You're too much. It's kind of weird. Kind of weird. <laughs> uh, how I do it, Matt? How are you? <laughs> Chris Riley Bobblehead. <laughs> the hotel to handle. That would be pretty cool. 
<laughs> That's awesome, Tom. Chris Gnome. <laughs> I am in Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, I'm not sure what the profile is. Well, I guess I could look, but I'm not sure what the palette profile is for this printer. I just went with that one. I'm not sure what speed that is. Numer says it takes nine hours to do a four color. Yes, you will need two USB ports to do this. One for the palette and one for your printer. Give or take. Well, I hate to cut this short, and I hate to not let you see this print all the way through, but I think I'm going to call this stream good, let this print, and we'll get ready for the afternoon fun in the country basement stream. Again, I will show you what the end result is in the thumbnail or pin it to the video or whatever. But really the setup wasn't that bad. The setup was pretty easy. It walked you through pretty much everything. It would be nice if they mentioned something in the book about calibration before you try to print. But hey, what are you gonna do? Oh well. So we'll get it calibrated and get it running well. You can uh, see the prints that I come up with on the Twitter and everything will be just peachy. Brakes aren't gonna fix themselves, that's right. Play death, <laughs> yeah. You have to watch it later, give or take. Okay guys, so I will see you, I'll see some of you at uh, four o'clock Eastern for Fun of Country Basement. Thanks for hanging out today. Thanks for the stream tips that came through. Always much appreciated. And uh, you have not seen the last of the palette too. Uh, we'll see you soon.